Good morning, morning Mr. Brother. Steven. How are you, sir? I'm doing super. Anyway, today we are we have uh, Kim Hui, who is uh, a, one of the most dynamic leaders in the network marketing industry. She took another company years ago from five people at her kitchen table to over a billion dollar in sales. And uh, she plans on doing that again with three. And uh, I had the chance, you know, me and Stephen met her out in um, – Salt Lake City, but I had the chance to meet her up in New Jersey not too long ago. So she's just, when you're in the room with her, her energy and vision just, uh, you, you know, when she says something, you know she's going to do it. That's it. She's a powerhouse. Yeah. So, so anyway, here's Kim just talking about just uh, the, you know, the blocking and tackling the basics of how to, to grow a network marketing business. You know, and really the uh, just, you know, getting out there, connecting with people and talking to people. So here we go. Perfect. Let's do it. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Kim Hui coming to you live. Uh, I'm now back in Los Angeles. So uh, welcome to the Zoom tonight. And uh, it, it has been an incredible journey the last couple of weeks. I've been... Uh, to uh, quite a few countries and uh, uh, and cities. Uh, so uh, after a few weeks of a couple of weeks of uh, rejuvenating rest, and uh, I'm back online. So um, it's great to to have you all joining us, and and thank you for tuning in here today. Uh, we have a theme today here. Uh, it's called farming the fields. And so uh, uh, coming to you now in LA, this is as farmy as I get. Um, I try to order order an overall jeans. It didn't arrive on time. So, uh, but we we have some guests that are totally dressed for the occasion. So uh, I want to welcome you all <laughs> and thank you for tuning in. And so, um, you know, as I travel the last couple of weeks and, and, and you know, being to 18 cities around the world, uh, there seemed to be a common thread uh, when it comes to building this business. So I wanted to really to take today, take about the first 20 you know minutes of my talk about, you know, what it is that we do and how is it we do. And then I'm going to have some special guests that will be also joining us and uh, to perhaps make it more even more clear. And I think just like anything else, when we have clarity of what is that we do, then we can apply the energy in which we do. So, so today's topic is farming the fields, right? So, uh, I, I pretend that we're farmers here today. And so, uh, but before that, let's let's kind of gain an understanding of and put things in contextualize. Like, what is that we do in the business, so that we can have a a better understanding what is that we do, and then apply some of the knowledge and gaining the clarity and applying in some of the skill sets and some of the activities to generate the results that we're looking for. Okay. So that being said, today, this is a business uh, opportunity. And so what I want to talk about is I, I wanted to to have a, you know, the, the, our guests here today to understand what business are we in and, and, and to understand the business, right? So and I want you to imagine that in your business, like in the old days, you know, like, you know, I'm in my late 50s, right? So, uh, you know, in the old days, imagine that you have a store, you have a business. And in that store, you have a cash register, you know, like in the old days, you know, when you have customers coming in, you ring the cash register, right? So imagine that. Now, how do we generate revenue? How do we make money? You know, two sources, right? One is customers. We make money through getting customers. And second, you know, how are we going to expand our business is also getting customer getters. OK, so two very simple things. Fact, this is about farming the field. How are you going to farm the field so you can harvest, bring the food home, bring the goods home? OK, so we get customers and we get customer getters. OK, now customers are people that love the product. They use a the product. And so as you get customers, great thing is our product is so consumable and it's so impactful. They're, they're by getting customers, they buy one time and then they love the product, they buy residually, and therefore you get a little bit of residual income, okay? But by, by yourself going out there and getting customers, that is still linear income, meaning, you know, you yourself go out there and get customers. Now, how are you going to build wealth and create wealth? And I want you to think about your little store, okay? And how do we gain? Now, imagine if you have many cash registers all over the country or whatever 
in the world that we're operating this this platform is available right now imagine if you have a cash register somewhere else whenever that cash register rings you get a little piece of override and how do you do that you do that by expanding your business and 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 as they open their business they have a cash register whenever they run their cash ring their cash register with customers you are going to get a little override so and, and and this is the most misunderstood industry so that's why i want to take time and i wanted to explain it in such a simple fashion so that people can understand how wealth are created or how wealth can be created in this platform when it's built right okay so that being said when you go out and get customers uh, you get a little bit of residual income as they you know every month or whenever they repeat the purchase you get paid residual income but it's still linear because it's based on your own effort in getting customers well how are you going to expand your business <clears throat> is by getting customer getters you know those people that want to also want to expand want to be a part of, of the movement or want to have their own business then they join you then those are called customer getters because they also get customers and so by doing that you're going to expand your business and you're going to have earned something called leverage income okay so that's where farming the field comes in okay like let's just say that you have a farm okay you have a land and so how do you bring what how do you bring the goods home well when you have a land first of all foremost make sure you have fertile ground right so and that being what was fertile ground in pers perspectively in our business fertile ground means you okay meaning do we have the right mindset towards this business are we positive are we do we have a positive outlook on the business because if you are going to be the farmer farming the land you better be in the fertile ground you better have the right ingredient between the two ears to farm your land to 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 sow your seeds right okay so the question i want you to ask yourself so first thing is fertile grounds right so fertile ground meaning you yourself gotta have the right perspective the right mindset about the business and second ask yourself the question what kind of crop you want to you what what what, what kind of uh, uh the crops yeah what kind of crops you want to harvest for your farm because if you know what kind of crops you want to harvest then you want to plan <coughs> and sow the seeds that you want so let's say if you want to harvest I don't know basil right so you're going to plant basil seeds if you want to harvest wheat rice you're going to plant those accordingly so what are the some of the seeds that you plan and this is meaning what what kind of people do you want what kind of customer getters or what kind of entrepreneurs do you want to have in your business and so and I want to spend a little bit like maybe five minutes talking about this because I think it's so important uh to have a right perspective when you go out there and build the business and I hope that this forms a basic foundation in you in engaging in this business okay so what are the, what's what are some of the seeds what are some of the seeds that you want to sow so that you could harvest the results right so i would say that the things that that helped me over the years last 30 years in, in this career is that first and foremost i look for people who are positive and who have an open mind because the last thing i want is someone who's negative and and you know close-minded and you would spend so much of your time and energy trying to convince somebody um uh, so i would suggest i mean look there's billions of people on earth okay at least right now anyways so look for those who 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 are open-minded and who are positive okay so these are some of the seeds that you're looking for and, and it is so important i mean it might sound so simple but oftentimes when people are engaged in a business they want to like quote and go grab everyone talk to everyone um let's be a little bit more strategic because if you're understanding the farming concept the sowing the seeds and and what type of crop you want to harvest what kind of what kind of uh grow, growing stuff that you want to bring home then you got to have the right seed that you're planting okay so I would say that people who are positive and open mind and then the second thing very important is the people who are hungry okay people who are hungry meaning people who who uh who are looking for a change plus very important people who are looking for a change and people who are willing to work for it there's a lot of people who are looking for change say so, you know what? I want to change my financial situation but when it comes to engaging in work 
They are not willing to put forth the work. And so why don't you do that for me? Why don't you call them for me? Nah, -uh. this is this this two combinations so important. Hungry and willing have a willingness to learn and a willingness to go to work. And because a lot of times people come in in this platform, they go, you know what? That's it. I'm going to be wealthy. You ain't going to be wealthy until you're willing to do the work. Okay. So it's important that you you get that people who are hungry now. Like I said, there are many people who are hungry and they're not willing to put forth the at work. If that's the case, I, I, I won't waste my time. Okay. Now, the third ingredient is very important is that people have uh, to be coachable. Okay. Now, in, in this business, the good thing is everybody can join this business. And also the downside of it is everybody can join the business, right? And so, and obviously as a sponsor, when you enroll other people, you want everyone to succeed on your team. And sometimes you cannot want it more for them than they want it for themselves. And so oftentimes, because this platform seems so easy, and when you bring people in the business, they think they know it all. And they go like, stop talking. I know what I'm doing. I'm a salesperson. I know how to sell. I know all this stuff. So when people are not coachable, what can you do? I mean, all you could do is lead the horse to the water. Whether you they drink or not, it's up to them. Okay. So um, coachability or teachability is so important. Oftentimes, I found that teachers in, in this industry does really well because they have the ability to learn and they have the ability to teach. And so uh, uh, sometimes a super salesman, uh, they don't last too long because it's only about them. It's very transactional. So I would suggest looking for people who are coachable. People say, you know what? I don't know all the ropes. This is a new gig for me. Teach me, coach me what to do. And then you as a sponsor, then you will, you will, you know, go coach them. So, uh, coachability, very important. And last but not least, look for people with a sphere of influence. Uh, sphere of influence, meaning <coughs> people that that's not the most important thing because when they want something bad enough, they will go out there and make some friends. Okay. Um, so I, I will look for people with sphere of influence and also people with personal power. Okay. Personal power, meaning, you know what? They, they have a certainty when they talk to certain people, they just have that. They're very influential when they talk something and their friends will listen and say, you know what? Um, I like what I'm hearing and I want to be a part of it. So that sphere of influence is very important. Now, having said that, I know a lot of times when people go out there and, and build the business, they have a tendency to look for like big title people, right? Oh, this person is a big business person or, or, or this person is uh, a big business owner or knows everybody, but do they have the willingness ingredients? Wow. Someone might be very, very uh influential but if they're not willing to put forth the effort it's not going to do us any good okay so it's not going to do you any good okay so uh, i would suggest this i would suggest <clears throat> that to to look for people who have a sphere of influence personal power and people who are willing to do this now there are some people that say listen you know i have a sphere of influence i don't have the time but i'm willing to be the bridge to bridge the gap then you go chase it okay so these are the type of seats if you would that i'd be looking for to sow the seed in my farm like in the fields okay so after you sow the seeds <coughs> Then we're going to talk about nurturing, right? So how you nurture your field, nurture your farm is very important. How you plow the field and plow the farm. So later on, I'm going to invite a couple of guests here to talk about plowing the fields, how they are plowing the fields, how they're harvesting, what, what is working for them. So we will we'll, we'll bring, bring them up shortly. So these are important. I mean, these sound so simple, but I really hope that it makes sense to you. Oftentimes, when a new distributor comes in or, or into this industry, they have a tendency they want to get somebody or they, they're like a radar, right? They latch onto somebody. They go, oh my God, if this person comes in, you know, they're going to be so good. They're going to do so well. They're going to be this. They're going to be that. <laughs> they're going to be nothing until they put forth the efforts. Okay. So don't get so attached to, to like, a, you know, because oftentimes, I'll, and I've seen it over and over and over again. New people get so attached to a person that they have such a, they feel like they have such a, they could be so good. And then they will bank all their time and effort on the super quote unquote superstar. And when this person does nothing, 
They look at their business. They didn't go out there and fill the pipeline. You need to go out there constantly, you know, spread the seed. Sometimes when you spread the seeds, you know, some seed got stolen. Some seed got taken, taken somewhere. <clears throat> some seed land in the wrong place, whatever. So you need to continuously fill your pipeline and farming and building. Okay. When I say farming, I hope you know what I mean. Good farming. Okay. Good farming. Bring good crops home. Okay. So, um, that's that on, 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 so. The fertile ground and how you're going to nurture them when you spread the seed, spread the seed. Yeah, so, uh, that, so that's Kim. That's part one uh, of our series here. And uh, Kim's, a, like I said, a very, very dynamic, dynamic uh, lady. Uh, just, uh, you know, she built it the right way from, uh, like I said, five people at her kitchen table to uh, a global network of over a, bil a billion dollars in sales. So, that is her vision for three wellness. And uh, we lost Stephen on this uh, journey today. But uh, yeah, technology, you never know how it's going to work. But uh, again, Ed Drost here, uh, my partner, Stephen Reeker, go to temovement.com, become part of the entrepreneurial movement, become, a, become part of the three wellness global solution, a global wellness movement. And, uh, you know, get yourself healthy. You know, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, I, I kind of let my health go to the wayside a little bit because, you know, you get so busy in business. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm real, you know, like I said, I'm realizing, uh, hey, your health, your health is your wealth. So let's uh, let's um, take it to the next level. Have some fun. Connect with me again. Look forward to connecting. And thanks for stopping by today.